everyone, I haven't forgotten about our PhD application videos that I started and that was kind of the main purpose of this channel, but I've sort of started making videos on current graduate students uh, as well and just burnout and stress and I think it's really important to be talking about these things but I haven't forgotten about the PhD application video we're still gonna make the most comprehensive PhD application guide ever um, so this is part five now and this is the last paragraph of the personal statement which I used to apply to Oxford and the one that uh, did get me invited for interview and then eventually accepted so what we uh, do in this last paragraph is we add a few more sort of tidbits, give the interviewers more information about ourselves, and we sort of wrap up the uh, PhD personal statement and we wrap up the application and we drive home the point that we are the right candidates for this job, we have the right experience, we have the right uh, future goals uh, in mind that sort of align with this project and this program and this university. Uh, and so we just wrap it up and really end with a bang, okay? So um, uh, keep watching and uh, do subscribe if you found this helpful and I'll see you in another video. So that was all that I mentioned in terms of research experience. And then I used the next bit to say why I'm actually applying to this particular uh, PhD and this particular field of research. Um, this was just something like a personal journey that I wanted to comment on. And I said that my supervisors encouraged me to pursue a PhD directly after graduating. However, I chose to pursue a master's first as it would not only further polish my research skills through the six month project, but also refine my research interests, ensuring I embark on a PhD with the approach of a young scientist rather than a student. So this was just something extra and personal. Um, and I just added it because I thought it showed a bit more ambition and a bit more clarity of how I wanted to approach my PhD, you know, with the approach of a scientist rather than a student just getting started and stuff like that. Um, during my master's, I was introduced to the role of epigenetics in cancer for the first time and was instantly fascinated. Um, I realized this was a field that was crucial in shaping our understanding of cancer, yet very little is known about it, representing a great niche to work in. So now I'm telling them why I'm applying to these projects. So the way my application worked was that you applied to the department and then every year they list available supervisors that are available to take on a PhD student and their projects uh, proposals. And so from that, you choose different projects. And I, all of my priorities were, were the epigenetics ones. Um, I found fascinating that all the concepts of the genetic origins of cancer and the hallmarks could be widened to include epigenetic mechanisms, um, et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm demonstrating knowledge of the field, right? Uh, and this was, again, they asked for it. Um, and also, um, I find it incredibly exciting that this fundamental research has the potential to be translated very quickly and thus fulfills my interest of combining fundamental research to a translational approach. So this t ties in with personal goals and plans for the future as well, so that these projects I'm applied, applying to, not only am I interested in them, but they also tie in with what I want to do in the future. Um, the projects also offer an opportunity to learn cutting edge tech, genetic and epigenetic techniques, ensuring I stay up to speed in a rapidly developing field. Um, so now in this sentence, what I said was, you know, what I will gain from these particular PhD students. And I usually mention like some techniques that I will learn. I don't know if I gave a specific example here, no, but it would have made it even better if I said, oh, this technique, I'm really excited to learn because it's being used so much in this field, etc. Uh, thus, I look forward to using knowledge gained through my degree and immersing myself in published work to drive my project and test my ideas in a very exciting con context. So this uh, line told them what I plan to do during my PhD, which was, OK, you know, I want to continue, you know, immersing myself in published work and testing my ideas and driving my project, et cetera, et cetera, that I had been doing it in my previous research experience and I want to continue doing it in a PhD. And that's also why I'm, I, I'm applying to the PhD. 
Um, and in addition, being in the intellectually stimulating and competitive environment at the University of Oxford will provide me with an opportunity to be challenged, uh, sift my ideas through critical minds and grow as a scientist, helping me reach my full potential. This opportunity to learn from and build connections with leading researchers is incredibly exciting and will prove invaluable. So a lot of times when you're applying to a certain university, they also kind of want to know, okay, why this university, you know? and you might not think that, you know, why Oxford is, and, and you'd be like, oh, that's so obvious. Why shouldn't I, why should I even need to comment on that? But actually, for your field, Oxford might not be the best place, you know, and so some other university would, could be better. So it's really important to evaluate, uh, you know, you just don't just want the name um, on your CV, but you want to show them why you, um, why you're here. Okay, then um, I'm sorry, how's it? I'm gonna quickly finish pretty soon. I think that's, yeah, okay, great. So that's the last thing now. This was my last uh, paragraph, and I said, through talking to postdocs and PIs, I've come to understand the unique challenges of academia, but regardless, I aspire to be an academic. Uh, I aspire to an academic career after my PhD and working closely with industry and clinicians to be at the interface of biology and medicine. So this bit through talking to postdocs and PIs, this shows that I'm pro proactive, I'm gathering information from other people, I'm speaking, you know, I'm making informed decisions, etc. that I understand that there are challenges in academia, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this last uh, half of the line told them more of the goals. And then this PhD will thus be crucial to my scientific development and serve as a stepping stone to help me achieve the goals that I aim to work tirelessly towards. And I always end most of my personal statements with this, you know, the help me achieve the goals I aim to work tirelessly towards. So you, you know that you want to work that hard. And if only I could stay true to this and work as hard as I thought I wanted to, that would be great. Um, so did I cover everything they asked for? Uh, reasons for applying, definitely. I told them, you know, why I wanted to apply to a PhD, why I wanted to do this specific project, what, it, how it went in line with my future plans and career, uh, evidence of motivation for and understanding of the proposed area of study. I did mention a few lines with, you know, cancer and epigenetics and that kind of stuff. Commitment to the subject, yes, you know, I was doing extra research projects, attending conferences, blah, blah, blah. Preliminary knowledge of research techniques. Yes, I did say what techniques I used and what I want to learn. Capacity for sustained and intense work. I kept talking about, oh, challenges and persistence and that kind of stuff. Um, and then reasoning reasoning ability. So I gave very specific examples of how, you know, I, I basically used my brain and gave specific examples of, you know, um, times. So. And then did we do this bit? The person statement should focus on your research experience in the field rather than personal achievements and interests. So although I mentioned interests and personal achievements, almost 50 to 60% of my personal statement focused on the research experience. I always, you know, just think of each question in terms of chronology, like before the PhD, during the PhD, after the PhD. Um, so why do you want to do a PhD? So talk about your journey before the PhD, what sparked your interest, and then what you're going to do during the PhD that you want to and what, what about afterwards same thing with the knowledge what knowledge do you have before the PhD what do you want to gain at, during the PhD and what are you going to do with that knowledge after the PhD same thing with the skills you know what skills do you have what skills do you want to learn how do these skills fit in with your plans and then ambitions uh, you know some unique things or ambitions like before the PhD what is your ambition for your PhD and what is your ambition for after your PhD.